There's been a ton of releases for AI coding tools lately. When it comes to the best tool you can use for free right now, there's not really any competition. It's still the Gemini CLI. On the free tier with a Google account, you can still get 60 requests per minute, 1,000 requests per day. But in typical Google fashion, its initial release was kind of a flop, missing a whole bunch of features. But Google and the open source community around the Gemini CLI just kept building. So in this video, I'm gonna show you five features that have been added since the initial release that I found really useful. Let's go. One common complaint with these AI CLI tools is it's kind of hard to restore back if the AI has gone and messed up your code. It doesn't give you good restore points. Gemini CLI quietly added a feature that fixes this, but it's not enabled by default. It's called checkpointing, and to turn it on, you can either use the checkpointing flag when you start up Gemini, and then it's enabled for that session, or you can add it to your settings.json, and it'll be the new default. And if I start Gemini with that checkpointing flag, it's gonna track every change I make to any file. And it's gonna basically build its own mini Git repository outside the scope of this project. And then give me all the restore points I can go back to. So let's do a change and see how that works. I'm just gonna fix this easy bug here with this red on red button. Gemini fixed, it was just a one line change in the globals.css file. And the fix works, now it's got white letters on the red background for that button. But now the cool thing, if you do the restore command, now it's gonna show you all the different restore points it took. In this case, it just shows me the one for the one file I just edited. If there's multiple files that edited in that one command, it would have a separate one for each of them. So if I just tab and put that restore point, it very quickly restored the project to the state before the tool call. In this case, the tool call is the edit tool that actually edits the code. And as you go, the restore points can get a little bit overwhelming, but it is good that they put in the date and time right in the restore point so you know basically when that file is edited. It's a super useful feature. It saved me a few times already. One feature missing when Gemini first dropped was the ability to see your code being edited in a visual editor, like VS Code or Cursor, because oftentimes you need to update the code even after Gemini has done something. And the inability to be synced with those editors was a big problem, but that's been fixed now. I'm inside Cursor now, and you can just use a free version of Cursor. You don't have to pay to get this working. If you just run a new terminal from inside Cursor and launch Gemini, you're gonna have an IDE command. And then the sub command you can use is enable. What's likely gonna happen is actually gonna fail to do that. For some reason, this enable doesn't work. What you can do instead is you just go to your marketplace and just search for Gemini CLI Companion. And for some reason, it's down low on the list. Once you get exactly that, just install that, restart cursor. And now if I go in again and do IDE status, it's gonna say connected to cursor. So what that means is I put in a prompt now, let's say I wanna change a feature that still uses Supabase and switch it over to Neon Database. Now as it's changing the code, it gives me real-time updates about what lines it's adding, what lines it's taking away. So now it shows me the file it's editing. It shows me all the diffs. I can just go through them one at a time if I want. So it's gonna give me indications about if something's wrong, where to look. It's just a much better developer experience with this integration turned on. If you're into AI software development like me, Make sure you subscribe to my newsletter, the AI Unleashed News. I'll share the latest information you need to know about what's going on with AI and software development, as well as tips and tricks, and just what I'm working on. It's the first link in the description, and I hope to see you there. Another feature added to Gemini after initial release was the init command. So if you run this, what it's gonna do is analyze your project and figure out all the technologies you're using, what the project actually does, all the components, where they live, it's gonna analyze the whole project and then give you a nice concise file called Gemini.md. So we can see what it created for us. It gives us a project overview, key technologies, like it discusses, we used React for the front end. It tells us how authentication works. So we're using Clark, we're using a Neon database, all those kind of key technologies and architectural highlights, install dependencies, environment variables. So really high level, but important information. And the cool thing is, when you load up Gemini again, now it's going to automatically say using Gemini.md file. So every time you do a new chat in this project, it's going to automatically load that file into context, which is going to make Gemini much better at finding out where to do fixes, what component to use. It'll basically point it in the right direction for a lot of changes you want to make to your application. So I definitely recommend running the init command on every one of your projects that you want to use inside Gemini. Sometimes when you start working with a new project, it takes the AI a while to get in the groove. You're kind of going back and forth for a while, not making much progress, and then you kind of get in a good spot where you're really coding and really making progress. But the problem is eventually you need to go to bed or do something else, and that conversation kind of goes away. Gemini has provided a way to actually save your chats. So if you do the slash chat command, then after that you have to give it a name, like what you want to save the chat as, so you can refer to it later. So give it something meaningful. So that's why I'm going to call it resume voodoo. I'm adding the neon DB to it. 
So now if I open up a fresh session of Gemini, maybe I'm coming back even months later, I can do a chat list. And now I'm gonna see all the conversations I have saved. And to bring it back, just do a chat resume. And there we go, it's just like I never left the conversation. We're all used to the standard where you open up Gemini in a directory, and that's the directory that becomes the context. We see that right here. That's basically our project. They've added this cool way you can add multiple directories at once. If you're looking at the directory slash command, there's a way you can add. What this does is add directories to the workspace. Now I can just add a new directory to this current one. And we do a directory show again. Now we see we have our original this resume voodoo folder, and it's added this maps application. Now the cool thing, they're all together. So I can kind of share the context space. I can take something from second project and add it to the first one, like a UI component, for example. So now you see it's taken that prompt and it's actually looking in both the folders and they can move stuff around from there. Super useful way to leverage maybe something you like from other projects and bring them into your current project. Finally, a really cool one is that is if you do slash Corgi, it totally remakes Gemini. Just joking. It's just a purely an Easter egg. It has this little Corgi looking ASCII characters down here. But the real question is when Labradoodle mode? I'm going to keep covering the Gemini CLI. I think it has a really important place in the market with that generous free tier because a lot of people can't afford a subscription. Be able to use this so much for free. It's a really good opportunity. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want more updates on this or any other thing else around AI software development. I hope you're having an amazing day. I'll talk to you in the next one.